Hey Robot Makers, hope you're having a good day so far. So let's have a look at what today's show is all about, shall we? Uh, so do you want to learn about... <laughs> I usually have my notes up here and I've just looked and I've not got my notes up here. So I made, I made a fluff of my intro there. So do you want to learn about the Picar, Picar, I think we're going to call it Picar X from Sunfounder and see if it's possibly the best robot kit that you can buy. Uh, if that sounds good to you, then this is the show for you. So let's dive straight in. My name's Kevin. Come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. Okay, so let's have a look at what today's show is about. So yes, it's looking at the, the, the Picar X from Sunfounder. Uh, so they sent me this uh, robot kit today. I had a great fun this weekend putting this together and I'll tell you about all my exploits about uh, getting this to work too. So we're going to have a look, at, learn about uh, what it is, uh, have a deep dive on some of the features, uh, a quick look at how to actually construct this, build it, uh, some of the pros and cons and some of the things I liked and disliked about it, mostly liked to be fair. And I'm going to have a bit of a demo of it in action. And if you're here for the live stream, we'll also have a bit of a mailbox and Q&A after the main show as well. Okay, so is this the best robot car kit you can buy? Uh, so we're going to have a look at that today. Let's see what we think about this. So have you heard about this kit before? So let's have a look at what PyCar X actually is. So it's a Raspberry Pi robotics kit from Sunfounder. It comes as a kit, so you get the joy of assembling this, and it's really, really easy to assemble. There's a, a nice uh, sheet that comes with it that tells you exactly all the parts, how to assemble it step by step. So it maybe takes an hour or so to uh, to assemble it, but it's uh, it's really good fun. It has a whole bunch of centers on there. So it has like a line flowing center. It's actually a grayscale center. There's three of them. It has a uh, ultrasonic rangefinder sensor. Turn the sound down a bit there. It has a Raspberry Pi compatible camera. It's actually um, a camera that they provide with it. They provide the cable. Uh, you can get this kit with or without a Raspberry Pi. This one came without a Raspberry Pi. Uh, and I initially tried to get this working with a Raspberry Pi um, 5, which I've now hidden away so i've got a raspberry pi 5 here but as usual with uh, all things that have a hat on them because this one does have a robotics hat uh, you'd need some kind of extender which i haven't got in stock yet i haven't got any um, of the header extenders the 40 pin header extenders so this wasn't um, able to work with the raspberry pi 5 but i'm sure it will do soon um, so it also comes with a battery, um, comes with um, a couple of servos for steering and for doing the pan and tilt of the uh, the camera which is really, really nice. Uh, and everything else, like I said, uh, this model came without the Pi, but you can get it with the Pi if you wish. And it also works with the Raspberry Pi 2, 3, 4, and hopefully 5 very soon. So let's have a look at some of the features of this. Let's dive into a little bit deeper. So one of the really nice things about this is it has a pan and tilt camera on the front. So you can make this like a um, FOV, first person vision, whatever <laughs> FPV stands for. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can you can have this so you can actually see what you're, where you're driving, you can look around and you can use all kinds of open CV, uh, machine learning and computer vision stuff to do some really clever stuff like detecting objects to follow or avoid and so on. Um, has a robotics motor driver hat as well. So there's all kinds of breakout headers on there. We'll have a look at that in a couple of slides time um, of all the different things that you can add to this, uh, which makes this really expandable. So I would see this as a baseboard that you can expand your projects on and you can do more with in the future. Uh, it has a speaker underneath the hat, which is really nice. That plugs into the sort of audio system of the Raspberry Pi. So we can do all kinds of text to speech. Uh, we can do all kinds of music and stuff like that and make it audible from the robot. Uh, the battery is underneath, so that's uh, in a nice location on the robot and it's well balanced as well so that it uh, doesn't tip over anything like that. It has an ultrasonic rangefinder on the front, which I quite like. We use these in a lot of our robotics projects. And it has three servos. So one of them is for doing the steering left and right at the front. That's why it's called a Pi Car, because it's more the car um, configuration rather than the sort of tank design. And it has a couple of TT motors, which they provided. They're the sort of ye yellow, chunky, continuous rotation uh, servos or motors. Uh, it has this gr three times grayscale line sensor edge detector. So it can detect if the front of the vehicle has gone over the over a cliff and then stop if it's not traveling too fast. Um, and overall, this is like a really great uh, kit, particularly if somebody's learning robotics and they want to have everything on there. So. We'll have a look at the price and things a bit later on. So let's have a look at that hat that comes with this because this is quite a, a cool feature of the, the kit. 
So it has some servo headers on there. There's actually, um, is it 12 PWM pins as it calls them? So um, 12 servo headers. It has two times motor ports on there. So these, these nice chunky motor connectors that you can connect your motors to. It has some ADC and PW, uh, PWM pins. Um, so you can either have um, analog to digital or just the pulse width modulation. Has a reset and user button, which is always useful to have. Also has an I squared C port on the front so you can connect um, all those sort of quest type connectors to this. Has the usual 40 pin header to connect it to a Raspberry Pi and it has the, the speaker underneath and also an on off switch, which is really useful to have too. So let's have a look at how we go about assembling this. So there are quite a few videos out there on assembling this. I didn't think I would cover this one. Um, I just basically did this on my couch this weekend. So it's very, very simple uh, to, to put this together. It's full step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, the ones I received were in English and uh, each step is very easy to follow. There's like no confusion, uh, nice sort of graphics as well to explain how to put this together. So you can see there how to attach all the standoffs and everything like that. Also comes with all the tools that you'll need to assemble this. So there's like a little spanner uh, for tightening up some of the nuts on there. There's uh, two screwdrivers, two different sizes for the two different types of screw that you'll need to screw in. One of the really nice features about this robot is the, the aluminium body. So it's a, a piece of, um, how would you describe this, a bent metal. Um, so sheet metal that's been bent into shape, uh, but it's really, really nicely finished. All the edges are fully deburred so that it's smooth to touch. Uh, there's no sharp edges. Everything feels like it's been well machined, well finished. So I really like this about it. And it's a very, very light piece of aluminium as well, um, uh, but really robust. Uh, so they've got the thickness of that just right. Comes with screws and little plastic rivets. I'll give you my opinion on the rivets uh, a little bit later on, but the uh, the screws for everything make it feel really, really high quality. I did kind of get uh, the vibes of this robot, which uh, we've reviewed previously from Electrics. Uh, this one retails for around 800 pounds, something like that. Uh, but this is a, a, a total aluminium body and all the, the screws and everything are metal on there as well. So kind of had that kind of vibe to it. Um, really high quality finish just overall even the wheels are nice nicely finished and around about an hour less than an hour just to put it together so there's the uh, the instructions that come with it it's a two-page pdf you can download or it actually comes with the the robot nicely folded up there it also has a get the tutorial uh, at the top i do find that slightly unusual that they've uh, they've linked to pycar-x-v20.rtfd.io which is a read the manual um, read the manual, read the docs uh, website, but then it redirects to their Sunfounder website. So I would have thought you'd have a pretty URL personally, something like sunfounder.com slash pycarx docs or something like that, rather than this uh, unusual one that then redirects back to their ma main site anyway. It's nitpicking, I know, but um, it did irk me a bit that. Uh, there is also a construction video on their website showing you how to put this together step by step. So that's nice uh, to watch if you get stuck at any point, and I really don't think you would get stuck on there. All the parts are listed on the front of the sheet, so you can just double check. Uh, and then one of the nice things, if I grab the box there, so this is the, the box that it came in. If I just open this up, you get plenty of spares in there. So um, if you get like a pack of say eight screws, they'll you only need to use six of them, so you might get two spare, and that means that you've got plenty just in case anything happens. And that also goes for the the cables as well, so they give you plenty of spares and things like the server um, horns, and you also get the USB cables, even provided in here with some electrical tape as well. But I don't, I don't know when they were supposed to actually use that, but that was in there too. So I like the fact that they give you plenty of spares, that, that's not always the case in some of these when they're trying to do a bit of value engineering. Okay, so programming this, there's a couple of options on how to program this robot. So first of all, there's Python. So if you want to dive straight into Python, they've got plenty of code on there. Uh, and it's essentially just uh, manipulating some of the GPIOs. Uh, and there's also some nice libraries. Um, I'll, I'll come to my thoughts on what I think about how these code that the code is kind of put together but there are separate libraries for like a vision library and that means things like color detection through the camera at the front um, they have made a class that kind of abstracts the usual open cv cv zone um, type libraries to make it so it seems more like their own libraries uh, however 
yeah, I, the, the way that you have to download these is all as separate libraries rather than one library with submodules. And I think that's how I would have done it personally. Uh, but we'll, we'll have a look at the code uh, in, a, in uh, the demo in a couple of minutes time. So that's one option. The next one is EasyBlocks. I've not heard of EasyBlocks before. We'll have a look at that. Uh, and that's something that SunFound have created themselves. And it's very similar to Blockly uh, or Scratch. And it means that you've got a nice visual um, visual way of programming using blocks uh, and you don't need to have any previous programming skills to be able to sort of get your robot up and running and they also have an app controller uh, which is a python program that you run on the board and then you can connect that uh, over wi-fi using an ios or android device so there's a, an app on the app store uh, on both on google play and uh, apple app store so you can download that for free and play with your robot from your phone so the the first one then the python so they've got this a couple of different Python modules that they include in the um, the PyCar X uh, Python library, the examples. So there's a text-to-speech engine, which is just eSpeak underneath. Uh, they do lots of stuff with OpenCV through the camera, which is quite neat. Uh, and that's wrapped around this sort of layer abstraction, this uh, VII uh, li library, I think they call it. There is also the uh, Pi Audio for doing sound stuff, so you can play sound files and things like that. And there's also a PyCar X class for easy programming in Python. So they've abstracted the robot's functions out into a class of its own. So you can just use that in your code without having to worry about everything else. So one of the bugbears I have is that this only works on a previous version, a legacy version of Raspberry Pi OS. So when I got the um, um, the Raspberry Pi that I'm using this, I already had um, Bookworm installed on it, the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS, and things like the camera module doesn't work anymore uh, on, on legacy code. And there was a couple of other things as well that didn't work. I think the speech, the sound stuff, pulse audio has now been changed uh, in the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, and there's no updated version on the SunFounder website or on the GitHub repository uh, to bring this up to date. So you have to actually install a previous version to get all the functionality out there. Uh, and that irks me a little bit just because really they should be keeping update in my opinion with them, whatever the latest OS is and make things compatible. So you wouldn't expect that if you had a, a desktop operating system and you had to downgrade it to a previous version of Mac OS, Windows or Linux just to be able to run one person's app. So I think it's similar with this as well. So that's one of one of the slight bugbears I had there. The app control, this is a, an iOS and Android app, like I said, from SunFounder, that you can use to control your um, your PyCar X. Connects over Wi-Fi. I was interested that they use Wi-Fi, not Bluetooth, but again, that's probably to do with using Bluetooth on Linux isn't the easiest thing to do. Um, it's not as simple as like on a Windows or Mac platform where it's all standardized, it's, uh, it's slightly different. Um, but the PyCar X uh, must be running the app-controller Python program to actually be able to use the app. So it doesn't just automatically connect. It doesn't run in the background. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind there. And then we have this EasyBlocks. So this is a fully featured Blockly-like visual program environment. It's quite mature, I would say. Clearly, they've been working on this for some time. Um, so it's very easy for beginners to get um, started with this or young programmers with the PyCar. And it's all open source, so you can extend this, you can download it, you can modify it, do what you like. All browser based, so nice and simple. You can run that from anywhere. It means it's ideal for educational use as well. So I just want to play a quick message from our sponsor, which is a PCB Way today. Thank you, Aileen, for uh, sponsoring today's show. Thank you, PCB Way. This video is sponsored by PCB Way, your ultimate destination for all things PCB manufacturing and assembly. Whether you're a hobbyist, a startup, or a seasoned professional, PCB Way has got you covered. PCB Way offers an impressive range of services. They provide high quality custom design printed circuit boards for any application you can imagine. From single layer to multi layer, flexible and even rigid flex PCBs, they have the expertise to bring your designs to life. PCB Way ensures fast turnaround times and affordable prices without compromising on quality. With their state of the art facilities and advanced manufacturing techniques, they can handle small prototype orders up to large scale production runs with equal precision and efficiency. PCB Way offers additional value added services such as PCB assembly, component software, and even functional testing. You can trust them to deliver the fully assembled and tested boards ready for integration into your projects. One of the best parts of PCBWay is their user-friendly online platform. It allows you to easily upload your designs, get instant
instant quotes and track the progress of your orders in real time. Plus their dedicated customer support team are ready to assist you with any questions or concerns. So whether you're working on an innovative Internet of Things device, a robotics project or anything in between, PCBWay is your go-to partner for reliable and affordable PCB manufacturing and assembly. Head over to PCBWay.com today and turn your ideas into reality. With PCBWay, your trusted PCB manufacturing and assembly partner. Great, thank you PCBWay for sponsoring uh, today's video. Okay, let's get back to it. So pros and cons, here are my uh, take on this. I always feel bad as a people pleaser giving cons here, but I want to give you an honest review of this. So prons, pron, prons, <laughs> pros, this is a high quality, um, high, highly machined aluminium body. Well, that's one of the things I really like about it. It means it's really strong, it means it's really light, uh, and it just makes it feel very high quality. Lots of good example software and Python support in there. Uh, even though I would have personally programmed that slightly differently, uh, they have programmed it, they have provided all the documentation there. It is a bit all over the show when it comes to documentation. I always like to have a single place to do that, usually within the manufacturer's own um, website, rather than it going off to separate repositories here and there. Uh, I love EasyBlocks, and that's a really nice innovation to include there, particularly that they've uh, created this. And it's great value. It's less than $100. I think it's $89 to buy this kit without the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so it's comparable to like the um, Pimeroni trailer bot. Um, and what other kits kind of would we compare that to? Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but um, it's, I, I think this is really great value actually for the, for the features that you get there and the quality of the build and the documentation. The speed of the rope is really fast is one of the things I would say there. Um, it's the weight and the size of it are a good weight and size for a desktop style robot and it's perfect for learning robotics. So I would say they're, they're mostly the, the pros I've got. Cons, there are some inconsistencies in the quality. So I love the aluminium body. One of the things I don't like is these little plastic rivets that you use to connect things like say the camera module. Uh, and they are essentially like a tube with a little post that goes through it. So you put the tube in, you push the post, and then it kind of splits out at the end. And I'm not sure how robust they will be over time, whether they sort of will, they're kind of rattle proof or whether they'll end up falling out. Uh, and for me, that the rivets don't match the rest of the quality. So there's a kind of inconsistency there with high quality in one in some areas and then low quality in other areas. So I would just use screws and nuts. I think that's a really good solution. Nuts with a nylon... Um, in a ring so that they can grab on there and don't fall off. I don't like the fact that it's uh, got an out of date OS required just for the camera support, for the sound support and so on. Um, companies do get wind of when things are changing and if you're a, a Raspberry Pi developer, you, you make products that uh, are for Raspberry Pi, then you need to get onto that and make sure that you update your software. So that would be, for me, something that they should be working on if they want to make this uh, sell well. And the length of some of the wires, this is again a bit of a nitpicking thing. Some of the wires are quite tight, so they've clearly been engineered to a specific length. And I've done it the way that it's um, it says you should do that on the web on the instructions, and they just barely fit. So this you know it pulls the uh, the little Dupont connector ever so slightly. So maybe a bit of slack, an extra centimeter or two on the wires wouldn't hurt there. But they're they're the cons. Some of the nitpicky stuff. The the main thing for me is just that uh, out of date Raspberry Pi OS that is required to make this actually work. Some things that I absolutely love about the Pi Cat X. So I love that it runs on a full Raspberry Pi. So there's quite a, a lot of robotics projects that use things like Arduino, which is great, but you do hit the limit of the board very soon. So the fact this uses a full Raspberry Pi means you've got absolutely almost infinite uh, options for this. It can use ROS, for example. You could use full Python with all the different Python machine learning modules. So much possibilities there. So I love that this is a Raspberry Pi, full Raspberry Pi uh, project kit it does also work on the raspberry pi 0 0 2w and um, so on so that's also an option if you want to use that um, in your kit as well so you could even use it without the wi-fi um, so the battery lasts longer for example and you don't really need to remotely connect to it great value for money so i think 89 dollars um, i'll check that in a second but i'm pretty sure that's what it costs i think that's great value for money for this particular kit build quality is absolutely excellent very simple to control each part i like how um the wheels move for steering, for example, nice and precise, uh, just using a very simple servo. Um, and the documentation is excellent as well. I think it's a mature product. I've seen on their website previous photographs, previous um, evolutions of this. 
previous versions of the design uh, where they've tweaked it. So this is clearly like the latest incarnation of that. So one of the things I was just thinking of there when I was talking about um, the build quality as well, one of the things that did niggle me a little bit is the servos are plastic servos rather than the sort of metal geared ones. And again, over time, are they going to stand up to sort of heavy wear and tear? Um, so they don't match the metal of the body. So I would say just go full in for the cost of it. Might as well push up to $100 and make it worth it. So if you like what I do and you want me to make more of these kinds of videos, please give this video a like. Drop me a comment. Let me know if uh, you if you have a robot kit and is there a robot kit that you would actually recommend. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. It means an awful lot to me. Uh, it means that I know my channel is growing and that people are wanting to watch my content. So please do subscribe. And I do go live every single Sunday at 7 o'clock GMT. We're not in the summertime anymore, so it is GMT plus zero. So if you want to know what time and you're not in the UK and you're in a different time zone, it's just GMT. So uh, just look at your local time zone and take that time off. OK, right. Let's have a look at the demo, shall we? So I'm just going to go over to me for a second and I'm just going to bring up um, a screen here we go so let me just bring this down here okay so I'm using VNC to connect to the Raspberry Pi and I've got a couple of different windows open here just so I can uh, run some of the demos so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this lib camera dash hello um, dash t zero which means don't time out time out of zero and I'm using this dash dash qt dash preview and this means that you can run um, applications that usually require uh, access to the video hardware rather than exposing that through um, the QT environment, which is the, the remote desktop environment. So if I run this, we will get a little window up with um, the camera right in front of it. So if I go to, let's see, that camera there, that camera is pointing directly at this camera here. And if I go back to, uh, oops, if I go back to the VNC, which is just there, you can see my finger is right in front of that as well. You can see we've got the, the, the camera that they're using is com is compatible with the very first Raspberry Pi camera, so like the Raspberry Pi camera 1.0. Uh, so I think it's like VGA kind of quality. And you can also see there the frames per second at the top of the screen. So we've got 30 frames per second. So it's, uh, it's pretty quick at sort of refreshing there. So um, yeah, I quite like this as a camera. And we've also got on here another window and we can run some demos now. So I've got my little demo sheet here just to tell me which ones to run. So let's go for the, the, the move program. So I'm just going to do because I'm using Bookworm. This is I've gone for the full latest version of Raspberry Pi OS because I want to find out what problems there are with the code and then potentially help fix them. So um, as I'm looking at this, I'm actually forked the code myself and I'm going to fix anything so that it does work with Bookworm. Right, so I'm going to run move and I'm also just going to move this window down here. So what move will do, uh, I don't know if I can get that window to be a bit further down. Can I move that around? Let's, let's leave it. Um, I'll just want to try and move that down a little bit. So this move program, what this will do is it will move the wheels of the robot and it will also uh, move the the pan and tilt of the camera as well. So I'm going to run this. Uh, oops. I need to type in Python, Kevin. Otherwise it won't know what to do with that. There we go. Right. So I'll show you the actual wheels moving in a second, but we're going to see the pan and tilt there. So it's nice and quick. Let's just run that again and I'll go to the overhead there. So you can see the wheels are moving and then the pan and tilt moves as well. Oh, maybe we can get that in view. Let me just move that down there. Right, let's run that again. There we go. So the, the wheels in the back are moving. We saw the steering moving and then the pan and tilt as well. That's pretty neat. Let's run that one more time. So I think that's running about half speed. And the steering is like a regular car steering. And we've got the pan and tilt as well. Cool. So that's the first one. Uh, the next one we're going to run is going to be what they call minecart. So let's run this one. Uh, oops, minecart, not minecart plus. Let me just do minecart. Uh, was it not called minecart? Let me just uh, check that one. Maybe it was minecart plus. There we go. Let's just run that. 
new member. Thanks, Alistair, for joining. Really appreciate that. Okay, right. So, let's run that. And what we will get there, we can see that the wheels are moving forward. Now, the idea of this minecart, at the moment it's rolling forward, so I'm just going to turn it slightly. And if I put my hand in front of the, the sensor, is it going to do anything? No, so this is basically just going to run forward. I think it's actually using the the sensors underneath, the line sensors. So as I obscure the line sensors, you can see the wheels will turn uh, like so. So they're just reacting to the, the grayscale sensor on there. Okay, how do I actually stop this now? There we go, Control C. Okay, so that's minecart. Avoid obstacles is the next one. So let's do pseudo Python avoid obstacles. Right, this is quite a cool one. Let's, so on here at the moment, it's detecting that camera there. So let's just move that slightly out of the way. Right, so the wheels are rolling forward. And as an object comes towards the car, oops, <laughs> trying to run this on top of a stand, right. But it's so violent at moving left and right, it's actually diving off the stand there. Right, so as my, if there's nothing in front of it and we can see that the dist distance is less than, is, is more than 30 centimeters, the wheels are rolling forwards. As something appears, it will try and dodge out the way just by steering the robot. And if it's too close, <laughs> if it's too close, let's just stop this code it will actually reverse backwards and turn right. So it's quite clever. The reason I've got it on a stand here is because it's really quite fast and I've not got enough desk space or room space to actually uh, maneuver this about. Right, let's just grab all of this. You can see on the camera there, everything it can see. So a slightly jaunty angle there, there we go. You can see all my messy robot lab there. Alex isn't with us today, as you can see. Uh, she's in Sheffield, right. So that's the obstacle avoidance one. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to find the uh, Easy Block Studio. So let's just jump over to that. So if I go to um, here. So easyblock.cc is the name of the website. And um, they've got a couple of examples here. And you can actually choose which vehicle that you want to actually use with this. So they've got all different kits that this is compatible with. It's got like a pan and tilt one. Pie Sloth, I'm not sure what that is. That looks pretty cool. Pie Crawler looks very similar to the Smars Quad. Pie Mobile. And pi arm as well so let's just go for the pi car x uh, you can do connect and that will actually try and connect to the uh, um, the remote i think it's the a remote web server that you have to run um, however i'm not going to run that simply because it doesn't work properly because i'm running this under bookworm and that the audio and the camera libraries don't work and that's basically it's it doesn't it doesn't have any kind of error checking to to handle the situation where they wouldn't work it just expects that to work right so i just created this little test program so let's go into here and this is very similar to like blockly so you can just go into the things like basic you've got like print for example we could just do print abc we've got things like logic or so if statements um testing true or false We've got all the loops, the while, re while do loops. Uh, we've got some maths functions in there as well. We've got things like pi for doing things with circles. There's all kinds of text things as well. Uh, the usual lists. Now they've got them for music, so you can play sounds through the speaker. We've got color, so this is quite neat. They've actually broken out um, how to convert things between colors and do things with colors. Um, creating variables such as distance that I created there, creating functions, threading, that's quite advanced, I guess, for um, <clears throat> this kind of environment. You don't normally see that there. And then things specific to the uh, PyCar X as well. So we can have a monitor for the camera. We can do color detection, face detection, gesture detection. So a lot of these are actually OpenCV running in the background. So things like the QR scanner. And then when you've actually detected something, you can see what size it is. Text to speech is in there. So this is eSpeak uh, for Python. We can play things like sound effects, such as this emergency alarm or some background music, entertain, entertainment MP3. And we've also got some, um, <clears throat> some more advanced things like setting pins, GPIOs, pulse width modulations, and so on. And they've also got some modules down here, such as the, the grayscale module and the ultrasonic uh, distance sensor. And we've got things like the uh, time function and remote as well. Uh, so that's on the code. There is also this uh, remote here, so you can use these joysticks to uh, 
to seem to have created a new joystick there. It's not quite what I wanted to do. Uh, can we delete that? I'm not sure. Do we just press delete? I don't know. I've actually not used this, so I'm not sure. And there's also a, a, a debug function down there too. So we can go back to, to here and uh, we can play with it. So this is quite a nice environment. Um, you can actually download this and run this locally if you wish, um, or you can run it from, from this uh, easy block. Um, so you don't even need to install anything. So if you're working in education, you have one of these Pi cars, you can just run everything from a browser. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I, I quite like that. And like I said, the price I think is $89. So if I just load up a Sun Founder, uh, sunfounder.com, and let's just quickly find the Pi car product. So if we go for uh, robotics, and let's find the pie car. There we go, $89. Yes, I wasn't telling fibs there. So 89 without a Raspberry Pi, two gig they've gone for, 164 with. Uh, it's about the price of a Raspberry Pi, I think. And uh, yeah, what else have we got on there that's worth noting? So they've got things like the, the pinouts, the assembly, um, some of the functions it can do, like the op AI detection. It can detect signs using OpenCV. Uh, can avoid obstacles, it can detect obstacles and recognize them. The cliff detection, as they call it, so it doesn't fall off if it's going forwards, that is. Musical mode, so it can uh, play music. And um, you can program in Python and Blockly, like we've said. And you can see there, Matt's done one um, on Not Enough Tech. And there's a couple of other videos as well, people assembling it. And generally, it's getting pretty good reviews there, fours and fives, which is pretty nice to see there too. You can see some uh, examples of what it looks like in the box there. So quite like that. Um, so I don't get any kind of kickback or anything like that. They simply just sent me the kit to review uh, and I got to pick which one of their robot kits to actually review. And I picked this one because it looked the best to me. Okay, so that's the uh, the demo for today. Let's have a look and see what else we've got in here. Um, so yes, if you want to learn robotics, Python, MicroPython, then you can get started very easily by going over to kedgerobots.com slash learn forward slash, and you can pick one of the free courses and dive straight in. There's absolutely no sign up uh, or any kind of um, email things required. You can just basically start learning the course right away. Uh, so have a look at that. So a really nice resource been building up there. We have merch. You can buy one of these really nice robot maker hats. Um, comes in a few different colors. I've also got the, the red one here. So you can see we've got a couple of colours there. You can also get the mugs. I'll like to use the drinks out of that, which is in the back of the show. Uh, and then we also do t-shirts such as this, uh, this t-shirt I'm wearing now, which is the, the Bubo t-shirt. Um, and there is also one for the burger bot as well. So check out kevsrobots.com slash merch for that. And if you're not on our Discord group, you might want to go and check out our Discord server. So kevsrobots.com slash Discord, no surprise for that. Uh, and you'll you'll join the large community of people there who are helping each other out with code. So I do get a lot of people watching my videos and then they will email me directly or message me directly on social media. And that's the worst way to get help because I'm just one person who has a day job, who does this as a hobby. If you go over to Discord, there's loads of people there smarter than me who can help you out probably right away with the problem that you're facing so that's the best place to get help and if you want to follow me on social media i do post pictures uh, daily of things i'm currently working on things i find interesting uh, so on threads i'm at kevin mcalear uh, on tiktok i'm kevin mcalear six uh, on instagram which is probably where i do most of the uh, picture posting at kevin mcalear on x i'm at kev's mac and on mastodon i'm at kev's mac at mastodon social and i do need to make a note to update make a note of this the uh, blue sky because i'm also on blue sky i think it's kev's mac at blue sky as well slide let's make a note of that to my to-do list there cool so follow me there if you want to uh, see some behind the scenes stuff and if you want to help support the show you can do this in a number of different ways if you want to get your name at the end of the credits which you'll see some people in a minute uh, you can go to kezrobots.com slash coffee you can buy me a physical coffee i'm a big coffee drinker i love caffeine uh, so you can do that just by going to kezrobots.com slash coffee uh, you can do a super thanks or a super chat, depending whether you're watching this live or on replay. And you can also join the YouTube membership program as well, using a little join button underneath the main window as well. I think it's the price of a coffee per month. So I just want to give a shout out to our supporters of the show. So here are the people who have already uh, helped support the show. So we've got uh, Mary Louise Mayer. Uh, she was also a uh, Buy Me A Coffee donator as well as a Buy Me A Coffee member. We've got Jeff Johnson. We've got Adam Sargent from uh, Haunted Howarth. Hey, Adam. 
We've got DN Corti, Marlene Brent. Hi, Marlene. We have Tom Shemi and Steve Phillips as well. And on the YouTube side, shide, <laughs> YouTube side, we have Jean Paul Jolly. We've got Chris. We've got Cassie. We've got Dale. We have Tinkering Rocks, JDM, uh, Johnny Bates, Bill Hoy, uh, Oxrad Thirty Nine, Handsome Chair Lights, Michael, um, and of course Tom. And we did uh, as well have um, Alistair who joined. So thank you, Alistair, for joining. You'll be on here uh, next week's. Um, so if you want to get your name in the credits, you can do this by going to kedrobots.com slash credits or kedrobots.com slash coffee. Take your pick. Cool. So I think that's everything that I wanted to cover off on that one. And yeah, I think that's it for today's main show. So this is the point in the video where I'll say thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time.